Hello everyone and welcome for another video of Love and War Games. In this video, we will talk about the big release of October 2022 and that was the Sturgenium Skies starter set. Uh, since there are so many miniatures in this box, we will divide it in two different videos and the first one, the one that you're watching right now, will be dedicated to the crown. First, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, who are the crown and how do they play. Basically, it's the British Empire, and visually, they are the most, uh, I call this default faction, because when you think steampunk, this is usually the Im image that you have in mind. These are very classical uh, steampunk faction. How do they play? They have solid ships, and they will do what they are supposed to do. They are usually quite balanced, and they have more defensive tricks than other factions, usually. Especially, they can make very good use of their Guardian Generators, which are a variation of the Shield Generators. And basically, once you learn how to use it, you can really optimize it to cancel out entire enemy attacks. Also, they can make the most out of the classical weaponries in the game. For example, they can really boost successfully their heavy gun batteries, and they are also very good with torpedoes. Actually, they are probably the best faction in the entire game with torpedoes, with multiple ways to boost their torpedo gain. Now that we've seen who they are in general, let's see what you get uh, in the Strogenium Skies box. Uh, first of all, you see that you have quite a good number of ships, uh, this is for 94 pounds, so about 100 euros. But remember that Strogenium Skies, uh, Skies is uh, two factions, Crown and Imperium. And you have many, many things inside. You have dices, you have books, you have tokens, like movement tools, a lot of things. So it's not like the other boxes where you just buy the miniatures here. You have a lot of additional things. Uh, if you cut the price in half because you're sharing with an Imperium player, for example, it will only cost 47 pounds or about 50 euros. And then you still have uh, extra dice and tokens and stuff. Now that we've said this, what do we actually have inside? We have three war rotors, which are these larger uh, flying uh, cruisers with four giant rotors. Very cool ships that we'll see in a, in a bit and how they play. You also have nine mass one uh, rotors, so aerial units. Uh, three of them are the transport, the Tintagel, and six of them are the very small uh, Saxon scout rotors, which look almost like flying bombers, and we will see what they look like and how to play them in a minute. You also get three Canadian frontline cruisers. There are multiple ways to build them, and I will give you a few tips depending uh, on uh, what boxes you plan on buying about how to build them or not because this can be very tricky indeed. Pay attention to this part of the video especially. And you also get six Orca Hunter submarines, which are uh, Canadian ships uh, only, and they are small submarines, very cute and very useful. You also get three Crown SRS token. And why do you get SRS token when you don't have any carriers uh, in here, you might ask? It is because some of the uh, battle fleets that you can build with these ships do allow you to have free SRS token coming on turn 2 and 4. So in this occasion you might need a SRS token, so it is very good that you get them uh, in the box. And plus you get all the stuff that I've been talking about. You also get cards indeed, templates. You do have a lot of value in this box. If you plan on playing uh, Crown or Imperium, or both, uh, it is an amazingly good set. So now let's start talking about the ships themselves. First, the Priden War Rotor. Uh, as you can see, first of all, I just love how it looks. Like, it looks so good. Uh, it really reminds me, for example, of Alliance airships in Warcraft. Like, just glorious. Uh, what can we say about this? Remember, you have three of those. Uh, first of all, they are tough for an aerial unit. Uh, they have Armor 6, Citadel 12, which is basically the same as an Albion. Uh, it is more expensive, of course. It costs 120 points instead of 105. So yes, it is more expensive, it has one less hull point, 
but damn, <laughs> is it worth it? It is much, much more uh, agile because it is aerial. It has more defensive tricks because uh, it, it is aerial, so it's considered to be a bit further away than it actually is. It has a bombing attack that is good if you manage to have some enemy ships coming close to try to cancel out this aerial advantage. You can just fly over them and bombard them. And it does get an internal guardian generators. So you don't even need to remove one of the turrets to have uh, internal guardian generators. And as long as you have only one guardian generator, you can spend all your um, tokens from your guardian pool on it. So if you really want them to survive, you can make them survive, which is really great. One of the usual ways to go th uh, to cancel generators is to use torpedoes. And guess what? Aerial units are immune to torpedoes. So if you want, you can really make this really, really tough. Uh, as we said, it is... Uh, resilient, but it is more expensive than an Albion, so don't play it uh, like if it were an Albion. Uh, it is more pricey for its defensive profile, so you would not get uh, enough out of it. Uh, what I would recommend is using it on the flanks, because it is aerial, so you really need to be right under it to start to be able to shoot at it at closing range, which is where factions usually want to be. And if you have point blank weapon, you basically cannot never use it so if it is on the flank it will be very difficult for your opponent to deal with it uh, without really committing to charging it so that is very good use of it and uh, yeah the, it is also very efficient if you want to find a role for your pridens it is very good against other aerial units since it does get cloud hunting and uh, yeah if you fight for the air superiority it is a very good ship and we've seen more and more aerial units being released for every faction so it is always a good investment to have a couple of those pride ends in your fleet. Uh, something quite funny that you can do as well, uh, you can use it as a torpedo boat because it can get torpedo turrets somehow. And uh, <laughs> since it is, it's, yeah, the pride end itself is immune to torpedoes, well, you can really have fun and just torpedo away uh, at enemy submarines, for example, while being completely safe of uh, enemy torpedo reprisal. So yeah, it, it is a quite funny way to use it, uh, since you will really want to be at extreme range, and the enemy will want to be at point blank basically, to, since you are aerial. So if you play it like this, and you play a little bit agile and staying away from the enemy as fast as you can, because you are quite fast and agile, uh, then the, the enemy will have some headache strength to deal with your pride hits. Uh, what you can use it, you can use it as a flagship if you put a pride unit in a British rotor battle fleet. Uh, you can also do the same if you have an Avalon flagship, but it is uh, not released uh, yet. Um, by the time this video is released, you, it's probably already been announced the uh, release of the Avalon. But yeah, it, it is uh, one of the ways that you can have a British Rotor Battle Fleet is to have a Priden as a flagship. And then you can add one to three British aerial units, so some Saxon, some uh, Tintagel, or even other Pridens no problems about this and you can have an entire battle fleet composed entirely of aerial units so that is a very good thing and uh, yeah it is very thematic and i would highly recommend uh, trying this at least once because it looks very good on the table other uh, flying units that you get in this box are the saxon and the tintagel first uh, something that are true for both of those uh, first thing is that they are uh, very expensive for their defensive capabilities. They are Citadel 10 and 11. And let's remember that since they are mass ones, it means that a single uh, breach to the Citadel will bring them down and kill them outright. And when you pay 52 points for each Tintagel, uh, let's basically sum, uh, sum it up by saying you don't want to lose them so fast. They are thus uh, extremely fragile, for example, against railguns because every single shot of railguns has a very high ch uh, probability of sinking one of them. So they are uh, fragile against the right weapons. They do not have guardian generators, so you cannot really <laughs> try to save yourself from these uh, railguns or other anti-air weapons. And the last thing that is true for both of them is that if you want, uh, you can uh, say that they are Canadians instead of British. Uh, this helps you especially in lease construction. For example, if you want to have some air unit uh, in your Canadian battle fleet, as we will see at the end of the video, you sometimes do want that, uh, then they can absolutely take the Canadian keyword. Okay, now that we've said this, let's have a look at each of them in detail. The Saxon is 
very very fast i mean look at it it looks like uh, an aircraft like uh going just straight extremely fast and that's what it does it has speed 10 turn 8 so it's already very agile it has linear dash it has vanguard and power slide i mean this thing goes wherever it wants uh, easily no problem uh, which is good because it, it is fragile so it, its big uh, advantage is that it is extremely mobile uh, it does have also Skyfire as a rule, so you can boost the little rocket uh, battery that you see on the top. And uh, basically because of this, uh, it is made mostly, in my opinion, to hunt aerials. That is very good. However, do remember uh, that you pay a lot for these uh, Saxons. They are very good for sky uh, dueling uh, and staying away from surface units. But this is specifically what they do, and they do it very good, like charging the enemy units. But uh, I'm not sure they are priced so aggressively right now. The good thing is that there is only one way to build them. So you can build them already. And they might get a boost in a later Orbat update. Because they look very cool. But basically they will probably always play the same. Which is a very fast, very fragile Sky Hunter. Because that's what the miniature tells us from its appearance as well. Then you have the Tintagel. And the Tintagel is a tougher uh, brother of the Saxon. It is a bit slower, but it is tougher as well. Uh, what it does, uh, <laughs> it is uh, actually uh, equipped on top of its rocket battery with a rear torpedoes, which might sound a bit weird, but if you use your Tintagel as a strategic reserve uh, unit, then it can really be useful because you will arrive on the side of the uh, one of the board one of the side of the board on turn two and then since it is still quite fast you will fly over an enemy unit probably and then you can shoot your rocket somewhere and your torpedoes in the rear so it it can be used quite easily M many times i don't like rear torpedoes but on such a fast uh, unit it can be used uh, it, it is a little bit uh, weird because it has like very uh, weak fray and it kind of wants to board because it has some rules to board uh, further away but its free is very bad so you really need to pack a lot of those together to make a successful free attack and i'm not sure you want to invest so much for this it has low citadels so you if it is exposed you will lose them fast so i'm like a little bit still on this one as well a little bit like eh, not the most competitive ship right now however what it does get the integral is that it carries some paratroopers and basically ground troops. So we don't have rules yet for uh, ground assaults and conquering islands. Some, some of us have some homemade rules, but there are no official rules yet. And uh, who knows, maybe uh, once the like island conquest game mode will be released, those will be invaluables in like dropping paratroopers in the enemy's islands like very fast. Uh, but this is only some suppositions. Uh, probably it will be so, and they will be very valuable then. But for now, as a purely combat unit, they are fragile, they are tough, uh, like, um, sorry, they are slow-ish, and they want to do boarding actions, but they're not really good at it. So build them because they are beautiful, but uh, be prepared for the next orbit. Then you get some Canadian frontline cruisers. And uh, the important part here, and we'll go there for a minute, is that you have three of those, and if you only buy the Sturgenium Skies box, uh, and you don't buy other ships like the Protector uh, Canadian Submarine Carrier, or the, uh, like, yeah, mostly like this one, uh, then you really want to build at least uh, two of those as Toronto flagships, because it is going to be the only way that you can uh, have a legal Canadian uh, list and bring all your Canadian uh, funny ships. Uh, otherwise, yeah, it's really going to be difficult to have a legal list. So again, the big warning of the video is here. If you only buy the Sturgenium Skies and you will not have other Canadian flagships, uh, but, uh, build two of those as the Toronto to have a legal list. That's it for the big warning. Now let's have a look at all of them more in detail. Uh, first of all, these Canadian uh, cruisers, they are tougher than British uh, cruisers. They are easier to pilot, all of them, because they have their two turrets to the front. Uh, so they are yeah, a little bit easier to pilot when you are a newer player. Okay, good. Uh, however, they are usually more expensive than their British ships as well. And they're just, like, physically they are bigger. The miniatures are glorious. So, yeah, it depends on what you want. Quality over quantity, basically. 
The default uh, cruiser is the Newfoundland, and it's at 120 uh, points per model. Uh, so that's 50 po 15 points more uh, compared to Albion's. And unlike the Albion's, uh, the Newfoundlands have to pay for their torpedo turrets. So basically, if you want to really focus on torpedoes, uh, buy Albion's and not Newfoundlands. Uh, what uh, do they have in Newfoundland? They are easier to pilot, as we've said, and they are tough because they have ablative pro armor, uh, which means right now um, you remove a certain number of dice uh, when the enemy shoots at you uh, with uh, weapons in support. That's how ablative uh, armor works, and there might be a little change to this rule because it's too powerful, basically, so there might be some change by the time you watch this video, but regardless of what it's going to be, it means that the Newfoundland will be extremely tough for its points, uh, easy to pilot, and you just point the front to the enemy, and you go towards the enemy, and you just start shooting. And it is easy and fun to pilot, it is very good as a frontline unit, and if you are not sure what to build, it is never a bad idea to uh, build the Newfoundland. However, there might be for now a better variation that is very similar that we will see a little bit later. Uh, then we have the Bonaventure. Bonaventure uh, is much more expensive than the Newfoundland. It is 16 points more than the Newfoundland. Uh, so that gets that gets us at 136. That starts to get a lot. And it does not get heavy broadside uh, despite being a heavy cruiser. So that is a little bit disappointing. Uh, because like if it had heavy broadsides, you might uh, get a benefit from... Okay, trying to position so you flank the enemy, so you show your flank to the enemy. But here, the only advantage that you will get for this is your rear turret. Uh, and that's not something you really want to position yourself too hard, just to optimize your rear turret. I'm not sure it's worth it. So for now, uh, unfortunately, the Burn Aventure is a little bit too expensive, I think. Uh, for what it does, it lacks like some good rule that would really allow you to say like, okay, this is the premium ship that, okay, I pay a lot more, but okay, I get this. Uh, right now, it has a little bit better stats, rear turrets, eh, not sure it's worth it. And then you get the Toronto, the flagships. Uh, you need two of those uh, to make the flagship unit, and uh, not one, not three, you need two of those exactly. Uh, basically, it's the same stats as the Bonaventure, uh, more expensive, they are going to be at 150, so it starts to be quite the investment. But they get some special rules, like uh, AA specialist, which allows them to be ex uh, much, much more efficient against aerial units, especially if you want to keep the heavy gun batteries. It means that you will be able to use those much more efficiently against aerial units. And it, they also get fortunes of war, which is something almost mandatory, I would say now, uh, in this construction. It allows you to cancel some of the most powerful effect of your opponent. So it's really good. And plus, you do need the flagships anyway for your, uh, for your uh, fleets. That is really the good option to take the Torontos. So basically, what I'm trying to say is, if you are tempted by Bonaventure, uh, rather pay it for two Torontos, even if you don't absolutely need uh, a flagship because you could build your list without uh, just getting the AA specialist and fortunes of war is such a good deal that I would say like yeah go for it then what do you get you you can also build a uh, Halifax Halifax or great uh, they have uh, the same stat lines uh, as the Bonaventure which is good uh, they don't get the rear turret eh whatever, but they get this shield amplifier in the rear, and this is really, really great. Basically, it boosts the amount of Guardian generator points you generate in the area around itself, and they can be attached to Canadian flagships, which means that you can also pack your third cruiser as an Halifax and attach it to your um, Toronto cruisers. And that would be just amazing, like outright amazing, like three big ships, very tough ships, as a core of your list, and generating a lot of Guardian tokens. Uh, I would say that even when you play uh, mostly British force, it is a good thing to just go out of your way to include one or two uh, Halifax in your British list. Uh, it might not be easy because of list construction, because these are Canadian ships, but it's they just boost so much the what the British want to do, like the Crown wants to do in general, which is to have a lot of Guardian Generator points and use them to take the advantage early on. 
and uh, yeah the Alifax really helps you in this playstyle. plus it can be attached and it's really great and I just love this ship and it's very good and build at least one like if you don't know what to build yet and you have only uh, this Turginium Skies box I would say build two Torontos and one Alifax and you will be happy with this and that's it and the other options start to consider them uh, if you have multiple boxes and you're like okay what about this one maybe it could be interesting then you can start to consider it but uh, otherwise yeah just build at least one Alifax you will not regret it Let's move on with the Yukon, which is uh, the ship I was thinking about when I said that uh, for the Newfoundland you, there might be a better ship if you want to have Newfoundlands, and this is the one that I'm thinking about. Uh, the Yukon is 5 points more expensive than the Newfoundland, and uh, it is a little bit uh, weaker in terms of freight, so it is less good for boarding action, uh, which sometimes will be impactful, but most of the time no. What do you gain? Uh, you First of all, it's faster ship, which is good depending on what you want to do, but usually it is a very good thing to have better speed uh, when you want. It gets a mind sweeper, which is already sweet, and it has a mind layer, and not auxiliary mind layer, just straight out mind layer, which means that you will be able to drop quite a few uh, mind tokens around the map uh, for almost the same price as Newfoundlands and mines are really really useful uh, either your opponent is ready to deal with it with uh, some mine sweepers and sometimes it happens but mine sweeper units are relatively rare or they will have to spend some uh, SRS token to try to clean it or they will have to make big maneuvers to avoid them because uh, if you don't uh, handle the mines carefully they can do a lot lot of damage when you uh, like go through with them so I would say the Yukon is a very very good and tempting upgrade if you wanted to have some newfound lands and absolutely worth the upgrade in my opinion. And if you start to have uh, multiples of the Canadian frontline cruisers because you bought some Torontos or multiple of the Sturgeonium Skies etc. Uh, absolutely worth it once you have your tor two Torontos and your one Halifax. Absolutely worth it to make multiple Yukons after this. Then you have Orcas. And the Orcas are the submarines, very cute little submarines. They cost only uh, 33 points, which seems very, very good. Uh, they, the main thing that they can do is that they can be attached to a Canadian flagship. So you could attach them, for example, for to a Toronto, but in this sense I prefer the Halifax. Or, uh, even better, later on, if you get a protector, you can attach them to the protector, uh, which is a submarine aircraft carrier, and uh, if uh, the protector teleport, like deep strikes, um, how we call it, unexpected arrival, uh, the orcas can follow it for free, and also getting the rain deep strike. And two of those, as a, uh, supporting a torpedo attack, is plus 10 dices, which is usually the difference between barely making a point of damage sometimes, and, uh, and bring this attack uh, into okay, you are going to make a critical for sure. And that's usually worth it, I would say, absolutely. Plus, they boost the defense, so what is not to like? Uh, this is the first way to play the Orcas, and uh, you can make a pack of six of those, and they get Pack Hunter. Uh, so that starts to pile up real fast. You can really make a whole deluge of torpedoes, and uh, yeah, they're going to be very, very threatening like this. They're quite cheap. Um, yeah, ch uh, cheap. And if you get six of those uh, with Pack Hunter, they are going to ruin someone's day every single turn. So both ways of playing them, either as escorts, either as a pack uh, of hunters, work very well. And now, a few uh, examples of the list. Uh, first thing that I wanted to show is like, okay, you have the box, you build everything. Uh, what does it uh, look like, uh, for example? You can build three Pridens, three Tintagel, six Saxon, the two Torontos escorted by two Orcas to boost a little bit the torpedoes, uh, four Orcas uh, in their own little group plus one Halifax, and if you do all of this, uh, it's 1400 points. So a little bit uh, not enough to reach 1500 points, which is a standard game size, but still like a lot for half of a starter set. Like, and this looks like a very, very fun uh, list to build, where you will learn a lot out of it. And uh, there are not so many ways to, like, so many choice in this uh, box, 
uh, except like the three Canadian cruisers. But if you build it like this, you will be a future proof, especially with the two Torontos and the Halifax. And uh, this already looks like a fun list to put on the table and play. So yeah, this is absolutely what you get for the box and it is good value. Then I made a list, for example, if you do buy just one other thing, the Protector uh, Battlefleet set, uh, which includes uh, the Protector itself, two more Canadian cruisers and four um, uh, Orca submarines. And what can you do if you just buy the your part of this Georginium Skies and this uh, Protector Battlefleet? Um, for which, by the way, we did an unboxing video not so long ago if you want to have a look at what is inside the box. If you do get this, then you can reach almost 2,000 points by keeping the air units the same as they were, okay? You do get the protector that you put to Orcas in his court for 306 points, and those uh, either you can play them in unexpected arrival, or I think the protector is better just being in the in your own defensive line because it wants to send SRS tokens uh, on the first two turns. So just as a rear torpedo and SRS uh, platform, it's very good. Two Torontos with two Orcas still worth it very much. Uh, plus four orca as a pack hunter. One thing you could alternate is to actually put the Halifax in escort of the two Torontos and then put these two orcas that I'm pointing with uh, the cursor right now uh, to make one big pack of six orcas. Oh, absolutely possible as well. It's options, up to you. And then two Yukon cruisers to have a little bit more of the center of the board rolling power to support your Torontos and uh, your Pride etc. in the middle of the board. And that looks like a very very fun uh, list that you can get for uh, relatively cheap. Like I think it's gonna be for sure less than a hundred pounds if you share the Sturginium Skies with a friend and just buy the Protector Battlefleet. And that's yeah that's 2,000 points. That is a lot. You have like it's quite rare that, like that you make 2,000 points game. Usually it's more like a thousand or fifteen hundred points to make a, a good standard sized game. And the last list that I wanted to talk to you about is this Canadian uh, Battlefleet. And in this Battlefleet I wanted to optimize to get as many Snowbird uh, SRS token as possible. You might ask, okay, but what is a Snowbird SRS token? What I was telling you before, like why there are SRS token in the Sturginium Skies uh, box, is because if you do take this specific uh, battle fleet, then for each unit um, that the, you have on the table at the start of turn 2 and turn 4, you get some free SRS token, which is great. And so of course, like I wanted to see like how we can maximize this for 1000 points uh, and get as many tokens as possible in a single battle fleet. And so how to do this? You get two Torontos plus two Orcas in escort. That's already two units. Then a Halifax. Let's remember that you can always escort either with Orcas, either with Halifax. Depends if you are more defensive or offensive minded. You get two uh, single units of Yukons. Remember to separate them uh, in order to maximize uh, as much of the SRS tokens. A single pack of four Orcas. And then two aerial units. I, for example, suggested two singular uh, Tintagel uh, Escort. So this is something you can do uh, with the ships from the Protected Battlefleet, for example. You don't need to build them anyhow differently. And uh, this is 1000 points on the nose. And then depending on the uh, how many, like what point uh, size game you're playing, uh, you can add, for example, 500 or 1000 points of British forces, for example, or other crown uh, nations later on when they will be released and you have this 1000 points of Canadians in a single battle fleet very convenient and they will get you eight SRS token on turn two I don't know if you realize like uh, it's uh, the equivalent of for example a Mojaiski uh, which is a uh, quite large already uh, uh, SRS token carrier uh, the protector itself uh, it sends SRS every turn yes but uh, it sends six SRS and here you would get eight of course you can even more optimize this by replacing the two Torontos uh, with a protector to really have an extremely strong turn two and turn four in terms of SRS. You would get uh, yeah something like 14 SRS token. That is a lot to deal with. But yeah, it's a very fun little thing to keep in mind. And if you do play Canadian Battlefleet, I would try to put as many units as possible to maximize 
this bonus. And that's it for today. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Remember to give us a little thumbs up, it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, comments help even more, so do leave us a little comments, even if it's just to say like, yay, I liked it. Uh, it really helps us to be seen by as many people as possible, and thus to increasing the size of the Dystopian Wars community. And of course, if you have any comments like, okay, you should do a little bit more like this, or please, can you make a what to build video about this specific box? I, I don't know how to build it. Uh, please let us know and we'll, I will make a video about this uh, as soon as possible. Uh, thank you very much for uh, having watched this video until the end. It was uh, relatively long. Uh, I will see you next time and until then, remember to keep spreading the love around you. Bye-bye!